G'day, fellas, and we are here looking at the brand new Age of Empires 4 Season 1 update release notes. Now, we you will be familiar with some of the release notes that are in here, uh, but not all of them. So, if you've uh, if you've watched previous videos, I'd encourage you, make sure you stay until a little bit longer, just to double check that. Uh, but let's dive right into it. We're going to be taking a look. So, we are thrilled to officially welcome you to Age of Empires 4 Season 1 Festival of Ages, our first major update of 2022, launching tomorrow morning, Pacific Time, April 7th. So I'm assuming Pacific time means about this same time. So for me, it's like eight o'clock in the morning. So probably around the same time for you guys, maybe like an hour before this video got uploaded. Uh, as we shared this, maybe two hours. <laughs> as we shared this with our update, as we share with our update of roadmap, our view with these major updates is that we should be offering something for everyone. So whether you're a competitive player, a com campaign enthusiast, or someone who's eager to get your hands on the Edge of Empires 4 content editor, we hope you'll enjoy diving right into our largest set of release notes today. And it's bloody huge. Look at this little thing over on the side. This is going to be a long video. Go grab yourself something to drink. Uh, read on to learn more about the new features coming to Age of Empires 4, how we're approaching Civ and map balance, and more and more below. We'll also spend some time sharing what we learned from our first ever pup and some of what we planned. We planned following the official release of Season 1 update. As a reminder, we've already shared a deep dive on the content editor and mods, as well as ranked Season 1, which is set to kick off next week, Wednesday, April 13th, so don't miss out on that one. Uh, so you'll have some time to explore these changes before you hit the rank ladder to demonstrate your prowess and earn rewards. Note, upon... Updating to this patch, you'll no longer be... Uh, yep, this is the standard stuff. Learning from public previews. Okay, we wanted to extend a quick thank you to those who joined in on the 1v1 rank sessions preview and public update preview. That was me. Uh, not only did you arm us with knowledge we'll continue to apply in the future, but you helped us prepare, properly ready up for the Season 1 update with a close look. We'll likely notice a number of changes since these... Uh, so rank season tier terminology and artwork more closely align with the number of weapons present on each batch matching the tier. In the image below, we're showing the badges for tier 3, such as gold 3. There you guys go. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, several balance changes were made with pup feedback in mind. Stonewall tower cost increased from 200 to 300 stone. Hey, can we just like, can we just remove these from the game? <laughs> Herbal medicine technology moved from the dark age to the castle age. Okay, that's good. Uh, it's going all the way. So it's like skipping feudal, going straight to the castle age. So this is for Delhi Sultanate. Uh, so this has been busted as heck. So this is a great change. Uh, Chinese Imperial official train time reduced from 30 to 20 seconds. Uh, this is reverting the change from the original pup release notes. Uh, Delhi Sultanate and Abadacid Orchid bonus reduced. I say Orchid. Some people say Orchard, Orchard or something. I just remember I got a comment about it a couple times. Orchard bonus reduced from 250 to 100 food. Good. Get them out of their bases. Russ banded arms. Rus banded arms. Bonus range decrease from 1.5 to 0.5. So these are massive changes. Uh, and these are really going to help out with balance. So this takes Rus away. You guys remember I always talk about Rus being the number one late game civilization. This changes that. This takes them down a, a peg in my book. Uh, this will probably bring China up to number one. Probably take Rus down to number two. Uh, maybe even number three, actually. But we'll talk about that later. Pup participants also caught out a number of bugs we were able to fix before this release. Attempting to observe a modded game where you do not have the same mobs enabled should no longer result in a crash. Improvements made to sheep to allow for easier selection. Oof. Uh, selection tools should now prioritize siege. Unit selection of a building selection when a unit overlaps with a building. Fix an issue from the pup build where custom games that require mods sometimes do not show up as modded in the custom game browser and fixed an issue uh, found in the pup where infantry could occasionally sneak through palisades walls near bastions there you guys go so new features and highlights so there's the content editor which we've talked about already uh, first ever rank season starts next week based on your f feedback we've in implemented the global build queue thank you developers it is much appreciated that this much requested uh, feature is finally in the game should have been there on release wasn't uh, but I mean, you got it in there in the end, so better late than never, so thank you. The global build queue is visible in both gameplay and observer modes. Using the global build queue, you'll get an overview of all your upgrades and units in queue at the same time. At all times in the HUD, uh, you can click specific tiles within the global build queue to select the building. Uh, control click tiles in the build queue to cancel the most recently queued item. Okay, so it's got a whole bunch of functionality that's not just cosmetic. Uh, you can use cosmetics uh, to cycle... You should, sorry, cosmetics? Where did cosmetics come from? It's from Use cosmetics? I, I'm almost tempted to control F cosmetics. Uh, you can use hotkeys to cycle between show or upgrade only or hide. Uh, and you can see that they've added a whole bunch of new uh, hotkeys. We know you've been looking for improved hotkeys. And while we still have uh, some work underway and planned uh, for the future, Season 1 includes a number of exciting changes for a deeper, in-depth look. Check out the, the keyboard controls and quality of life section below. 
We've added the ability to rebind hotkeys to mouse three, four, five. Alleluia. Quickly toggle on and off control groups ex exclusivity. So that means that like if you've got a scout and you put it in control one and then all of a sudden you call um, or it's in control one and then you change it to control two, it'll just stay in control two. Uh, like it will be exclusively in that control group. So it, it won't be able to share control groups anymore. Um, you'll be able to bind other commands to the alt and shift key. Thank God we can finally remove the alt key. Uh, you guys know whenever I'm like, uh, whenever I'm spectating and I go to hit the alt button and it rotates, it's a good change. Uh, it's now possible to navigate on the map after being eliminated when the game is over. Great job, finally there. I didn't think the technology was there in 2022, but it seems that it is, so that's great to see. Introducing the patrol move in game. Thank the Lord. You can now use random civilization selection. Hallelujah. We're unveiling a brand new art of war challenge. Oh, you love it. You just love it. And <laughs> you guys know I'm being sarcastic about that, but I know that there are so many people that are going to be like, fuck yeah, I'm going to go get gold in art of war. That shit's hard as fuck. Dude, I actually... I, it took me a while to get the gold, all of the golds in Art of War. I got them all eventually, but like you gotta you gotta prepare for that. A Q dodging cooldown system has been added that applies five, fifteen, thirty, and sixty minute lockouts. Hallelujah. Hold on, I gotta pause the music for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, back to it. Q dodging behavior has affected quick match for some time. While we have long-term solutions, we're not ready to share just yet. This cooldown system will help Qs move along more quickly. We will continue to monitor feedback around the system and make adjustments where appropriate. There you guys go. The cooldown escalates for each Q dodge performed following the first... Oh, you love to see it. We've made some improvements to the layout of the China Dynasty UI. The Chinese Dynasty button will now, now fit snugly next to the official button. We've replaced the Dynasty name with the Chinese character on Dynasty button. There you guys go. So you can see we've got Tang, we've got Song, we've got Yuan, and you've got Ming. Uh, sorry, Ming. Uh, based on player feedback and data, we have made difficulty tuning to six campaign missions. So there you guys go, all you mission players. I know, I know I've got a couple of friends that are big fans of the missions. Uh, looking at you, Chopper. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm looking at Major Foley. Major Foley loves the missions, so that's good to see. Uh, and they've also got some mods, in-house mods. Uh, so Royal Rumble. Uh, you guys would be familiar with this if uh, if you watched any of the earlier videos, but they've got, uh, you know, Royal Rumble. They've got uh, some maps that they've created as well. So these are really, really cool maps. Uh, I I'm looking so, so freaking forward to these. Uh, they've also got uh, a whole bunch of different tuning packs, so it changes the way that the game is actually played. Um, so things like uh, your wolves can be more bitey. Uh, you can have double villages. That's the sort of thing that they've they've got. Uh, and then mod bug bug fixes. We're not going to go over the bug fixes too much. But now we go to the balance. Uh, balance is very important. Now you guys, we're just going to go straight past the update goals. You can see them there. But essentially, they just want to make it so every civ is a bit more competitive. Uh, all civilizations, core units. So they've increased the amount of time that it takes to build uh, field or build. Siege on the field. Great change. Uh, it's sprinkled Magnet on Traction Trebuchet, so it only affects the Abbasid Dynasty, only affects the Mongols, uh, especially this one, but you can see it's just by a mile. Great change. 10 out of 10. We don't need a developer note for that one. Uh, or at least I don't need to read the developer note for that one. I can agree with that one. Uh, scouts. So uh, we found scout attack times to feel too long and unresponsive. This is especially noticeable in the early stages of the game when the unit counts are lower. So this is an interesting um, mechanic. So is, or what? Hold on. Do they not reduce the damage of the scout? Do they just... I don't know they did. Okay, so this is an interesting change. And this is actually pretty... This is a nice little buff uh, for defensive play. So you guys know like a, a Rus player or anybody who's got like scouts, they'll typically be attacking your gold mine or, or your villagers on the gold mine. And so what you will do is you will then be like crying because your villagers are dying. Uh, but what you can do is you can bring your scout back and, you know, use that scout to try and damage the enemy's scout so that they stop doing that. Uh, so what this change does is they are... Uh, reducing the damage that is being done by two, but they are also reducing the time it takes uh, to to do a uh, to do a damage to do an attack by two. So there's no actual change to the DPS of the unit, except with regard to other scouts, because the scout has a ten time or ten times bonus, geez, a, a plus ten bonus against scouts. Kind of like how you know the the crossbow has a bonus against heavy units. Uh, the uh, the horseman has a bonus against ranged units. The scout has a bonus against other scouting units like the Khan or just the scout of plus 10. And that is still going to apply there. So you're going to be doing 12 dam damage every two seconds, which works out to be a total of 24 damage compared to where you would have been just previously dealing 14 damage. So this is a really big buff uh, to 
more defensive. Not a big buff, but it's it's a, a nice little buff to the defensive play style. Um, and uh, it, it makes it feel a little bit more fluid as well. So really good change. Economy. Now, we've talked about this one before. Uh, our main change I want to just talk about is this. Villager hunted meat carry capacity increased from 10 to 25. This is a big, big oof right there. This is such a feels good moment. Uh, this is going to make hunting a lot more viable out on the map. And you might not think so, but let me explain. So you need to think about where you place that mill in the middle of that deer hunt. It's typically all going to be, you know, two tiles away, three tiles away, something like that. This is going to change how much your villagers are walking back and forth. Amazing change. Such a smart move from them as well. Uh, also buffing up survival techniques, changing the way it works, to be honest. Uh, naval. Um, so in Improve the responsiveness of, of re responsiveness of small and medium ships. Arrow ships can no longer fire while moving. Uh, and they've done a whole bunch of other changes, uh, reducing the amount of time it takes to research those tech upgrades. So that, that's nice because typically your docks, they're going to be under production a lot. Um, but they've also done a whole bunch of other re, uh, rebalancing. So we'll have to see how that goes on the water. You know, water balance is one of those things that can shift very, very quickly when people learn or discover a new strategy or tactic because then it sort of, it just changes the way that water is played. Uh, like as an example, we saw that, you know, Delhi were the strongest on hybrid maps and then people were like, wait a minute, I can just go with the Rus and I can just kind of wall off over in my own little segment or take my own little pond. And then when I get up, you guys know what happens from there. Uh, so yeah, a whole bunch of water changes. We're not going to talk too much about it because that's not going to be a huge part of the gameplay, but I'll leave a link in the description to the patch notes. If you want to go over them, you can make sure you do that. Now, this is where we get to the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the, the meat, the potatoes of the patch notes. Core buildings and upgrades. Buildings under construction receive 50% more damage. So that's going to think about that's going to affect your tower rushes uh but the, by the same token that's going to affect if you're trying to put down a keep and you're under attack uh maybe don't go for as aggressive as or not aggressive necessarily but don't go for like a super duper far forward one if someone's attacking you like try and keep it in the back of your base no pun intended uh keep build time increase from 120 to 140 seconds stone build stone wall tower build time increase from 60 to 90 seconds stone wall tower cost increase from 200 to 300 stone Boiling oil cost increased. This is great. Boiling oil research time increased. Great. Boiling oil is incredibly powerful. One of the best upgrades in the game. Uh, so this is uh, this is a really good change. Greased axles movement speed bonus reduced. So this is the uh, the, the castle age movement speed bonus that you get for siege. Uh, geometry moved from the university to the siege workshop. So geometry is your ram as well as your uh, trebuchet damage bonus. Uh, they also changed the cost. Uh, so reducing it. So a nice little buff in the late game for your rams and your trebs. Uh, and then also reduce the the uh, research time. Um, and then we've got siege works being moved to the uh, university. This is the one that gave extra health to siege as well as extra armor. Um, and so they moved it to the university. It's interesting how they move them between the siege works and the university. So if, if a tech is too strong, they'll move it to the university. If it's too weak, they'll move it back to the siege workshop. I like it. It's pretty smart. Uh, so um, they've, they've changed a whole bunch of other stuff. Improved siege, uh, improved Mongol, improved version, uh, cost increased. Uh, so that is for just siege works. Uh, also changing it for the Delhi Sultanate. Tithe Barn now correctly provides 30 stone per minute instead of 15. Wonderful. Uh, this was an interesting thing that I picked up when I was doing some testing. Um, repairability now shows the correct requirements when attempting to use it on an enemy player. So you're not going to get that insufficient wood any anymore. Uh, all of your wood insufficiencies will be fixed. Balance Civ specific. Abbasid Dynasty. Now this is where I pull out that meme. You know the meme? It's like... Oh, no, 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 no. Like the look at the top of his head one. It, it's it's that like, because we are buffing the Abbasid. I mean, to be fair, we're buffing the Abbasid, but we're also nerfing Abbasid and Delhi. But let's take a look at it. Uh, so Orchid bonus, or Orchid bonus reduce uh, from 250 to 100. This is really good. Obviously, the Abbasid and the Delhi love to stay in their base. They put the mill down on the... Uh, on, on the berries and they chill out there for the next 15 minutes just hanging out in their base uh, So this is going to change that so they're only going to be able to hang out in their base for 13 minutes now uh, No, but seriously, this is a really good change So still a meaningful impact uh, for their bonus But at the same time not something that's going to be uh, to the extent where it was enabling them to turtle uh, Until they were strong enough to push out uh, Now this is this is where it starts to get concerning because camel archers are actually very decent uh, So their movement speed got increased the camel archer so a bit better to kite with um, their bonus 
Well, so their damage gets increased. So they go from 10 to 12, uh, but their bonus versus Spearman gets reduced. Uh, so it goes from a 2 to 3. So essentially, against Spearman, uh, they are now doing a total of 24 damage before it was 30 damage. So this is good. It reduces the uh, their ability to snipe out enemy spears, but at the same time, it makes them a lot better against other enemy units. Uh, and so it's something to be very, very careful of. I suspect this the Camel Archer is going to be a very strong unit in this patch uh, and would probably expect that we might even see it tuned down in the next one, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, Camel Rider, a much needed buff here though. Uh, so this is a really good change great to see it so essentially what they're doing is just taking your the the bonus damage that the camel rider has they're taking like part of that away and then giving it to it back as just normal damage so basically just making it so it's less specialized more general and as a result a uh, a more viable unit so really good to see here uh, camel biting now affects camel riders no longer affects the or now only affects camel riders no longer affects the camel archer a good little change there uh, so camel biting was the plus two armor uh, camel biting moved to the blacksmith from the stables oh sorry from the blacksmith to the stables uh, camel biting cost reduced significantly this is a really good change because it was an absolutely useless tech before because no one was going to spend that much money on it it was just ridiculous uh camel biting research time reduced as well to 45 seconds I, i'm pretty confident it's, is it still an imperial age tech i don't actually know if it's an imp age tech or if it's a um or if it's a castle age tech with a cost like this you would think it's a castle age tech but no I th actually i think it is a castle age tech because i remember thinking why is it got an imperial age cost if it's a castle age tech so it's actually bringing it in line so I'm, I'm suspecting it probably was an imperial tech and they brought it down to balance it forgot to change the cost but now the cost is actually in line with it so that makes sense um faith can no longer be used to convert naval units wonderful abbasid golden age production speed bonus now properly applies to all production buildings and not only military production buildings composite bow tooltip now correctly displays 33 percent attack speed increase instead of 25 percent gosh that's a lot uh improved processing now applies to towns but i think composite bows only it says it affects archers but i don't think it affects camel archers if it affects uh, i'm pretty confident it doesn't i remember uh, i think there was a youtube comment about this saying it doesn't affect camel archers it affects crossbows it affects archers that's it does not affect camel archers so you get some pretty beasty archers beasty beasty cutie beasty archers in the late game like you get uh boot camp as well as the um as, as well as this so composite bows plus boot camp it's, it's not too bad. Um, improved processing now applies to town centers, so I think it only applied to other drop-offs. Uh, now, changes just... So, we're just on the Abbasid Dynasty, by the way. Economic wing changes. Uh, so, agriculture cost uh, has been reduced significantly, so you can see people are going to be definitely getting this upgrade a bit more. So, that's the one that's like 15% increase, increased farming. Uh, also, change or reduce the time it takes. Trade wing changes. Here we go, baby. This is actually insane. And by the way, can I just say, devs, uh, your bullet points totally off on this one. Can you get it fixed up? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But like, at the same time, you know, I do have diagnosed obsessive compulsive disorder. If there's something that triggers me more than like bad balance changes, it's like bullet points not being the right spaces, not being the right color, not being the right indentation. Fix it off. <laughs> Grand Bazaar moved to the Imperial or from the Imperial Age to the Feudal Age. Uh, Grand Bazaar cost reduced as well as the research time being reduced. Uh, so Grand Bazaar is the technology that allow or once you've researched it, your traders can bring back a second uh, resource. So if you want to bring back food, if you want to bring back wood, if you want to bring back stone, then you can do it with Grand Bazaar. Uh, Spice Rose is moved from the Feudal Age to Imperial Age. Spice Rose is the one that just increases the amount of resources that you get up. To, I think it's by 30% or 25 it's one of the two. Uh, military wing changes. So boot camp is now in the feudal age. So boot camp is plus 10 or plus 15% uh, health to infantry. Uh, I think, I want to say it's plus 10%. I remember my spears going from like 80 to 90 or something like that. Um, but then that 15 would make more percent. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure ex 15 would make more percent. 15 would make more sense. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly what it is, but uh, I can assure you it's it's obviously it's a good change. It's it's one of those static changes because before it was uh, it was the camel support and that was a little bit difficult because when it was in the early game, it's like, okay, well, I can add in two camels to my army, but then they just get picked off by, you know, the longbows or the archers or the horsemen or whatever it is. Now they've made it so that that boot camp tech has come down into the feudal age and then camel support goes up into the fourth age and it increases instead of armor being increased by one it's increased by two think about that for a second two extra armor and that's all armor 
So like your men at arms now have, you know, the armor chads from England. Well, great. You've got those as well. Your archers, literally impenetrable armor. They've got five armor on those bad boys. These things are going to be tanks. It's going to be absolute insanity. You just mix in a couple of, of camels in the late game. And keep in mind, right? You've got, you, you've got boot camp. You've got uh, composite bows on your archer. Throw in camel support. You've got five armor, 10% or 15% more health, 33% more damage. These guys are going to freaking destroy. I'm looking forward to seeing some Abbasid late game archer spam and, and what can beat them. I mean, I'm sure the horsemen will probably beat them quite cost effectively, but we'll see how it plays out. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of changes there. Now we go to the Chinese uh, changes. You guys know Chinese are very close to my heart. Uh, they are a civilization that I am very fond of. Yeah, let's just go with that. All right. Uh, ancient techniques cost increased. Okay, so this is the late game. Uh, so as players start in Dynasty and normally grab a song early, this tech is giving at least a 10% bonus to gather rates and up to 20% for all resources. Yeah, but it's a bonus to gather rates. And this is what you've got to remember, right? Like as the game goes on, my gather rates are going to mean less and less because they have diminishing returns. So the first 15% doesn't actually give a 15% bonus. It gives like a 9.5% bonus. Uh, and by the time you've got like all three of, of the upgrades, it's giving like a 26% bonus if you're lucky. And so this 20% bonus for all resources isn't actually a 20% bonus. It's probably more like a 13% bonus or 14% bonus. I, I, I haven't done the math on it, but I'm, I would suspect, you know, it's, it's not really that pretty. If this was going to be in, uh, increases the resources dropped off, I could totally get behind that. 20% of all resources being dropped off? Hell yeah. Like, you, you know the bonus that the Imperial official has? I mean, that just makes Chinese late game even stronger. Don't worry. Don't listen to me, guys. Uh, ancient techniques, research time is increased. Barbican of the Sun sight range increased to match the outpost as well. So before, when the, uh, the when you built the Barbican, um, it, w it had a really short line of sight, but now it's got the same as an outpost. Good change. Imperial spies ability from the Imperial... Palace landmark now reveals vills, traders, trade ships, fishing boats, and officials. So nothing is going to be hiding from us anymore. An insidious tax fraud scheme has been discovered by our internal investigation bureau. It has come to our attention that officials have been collecting taxes more often than permitted by imperial decree. An official reprimand has been issued and the guilty have been punished. Firmer rules have been enacted to prevent this corruption from happening again in the future. What? <laughs> what? What is this? <laughs> I like how this is just in line with everything else. Um, okay. Interesting. I, that would probably explain why I had so much gold in the pup. Um, uh, but this is from the pup. I don't know. I don't get this. But anyway, nice, nice bug fix or... Maybe it's a balance change. Fix a bug where Elite Fire Lancer Torch damage wasn't increasing when upgraded to Elite. Fix a bug where Pagodas could generate more resources than intended. Good changes. Chinese Dynasty changes. Now, this is where it gets big. You guys know I'm a big fan of the Chinese, as I talked about a little bit earlier, and I love going into Song Dynasty. But the question is, is there going to be enough viability? Is there going to be enough oomph in the Song Dynasty anymore? Or am I just going to stick it out in the Tang Dynasty? Let's find out. Dynasty units and buildings are no longer gated when advancing to the next dynasty. Once unlocked, you can locked, you can always build them. Yuan Dynasty movement speed bonus no longer applies to siege. Two great changes, but my question is, okay, if that's the case, what are you doing with the Spirit Way? Because the Spirit Way, the landmark in Age 4, it actually allows you to unlock all of the units from previous dynasties. And if you're giving everybody else, or if you're giving us the ability to do that, then what are you doing? Are you just taking that ability away and then just call it a day? Because I think you still get a 30% cost reduction on immediate buildings immediately nearby that are training those units, or those dynasty units. So we'll see. Uh, Yuan Dynasty, oh, we, we talked about that. This is a really good change. Uh, I think they're also uh, removing the YAM uh, network speed off the Mongols siege as well. Uh, so hopefully this is in here. Uh, in, in fact, I'm just going to go straight down to the Mongols right now because I don't want to forget about that. Mongols. The upgraded YAM aura movement speed bonus no longer applies to siege weapons. Uh, oh, we've already sung that song, Drongo. D DMCA, all right, mate? Um, okay, so here we are. Village requirement reduced from Song Dynasty to Tang Dynasty. Uh, village cost increased from 100 to 125 wood. Village health increased from 1,000 to 1,500. So basically what they're doing is saying you can make the village without going into the, say, into the, Tang Din or into the Song Dynasty. Um, and this isn't really the big change. I mean, it's still, it's, it's a nice change. Uh, but what 
the the really attractive thing about this is that it allows the granary to come down into the song dynasty which all of a sudden means it's available in the second age which means all of a sudden staying in the second age and fighting like a crazy man is actually a good thing for china because you can actually get your granary economy going behind it uh and uh, we will be talking in great depth about the granary in later videos so make sure you uh make sure you hit the subscribe button to uh to check that one out and you know what i'm actually going to point it out i've i don't think i've ever asked anybody ever to subscribe so if you're not subscribed already like what are you doing man like we're posting videos like i'm posting like three videos a day and you're not subscribed to me crazy crazy all right uh <laughs> great so granary has been moved to the song dynasty harvest bonus has been reduced from 15 to 10 percent uh and health increased from a thousand to fifteen hundred so essentially what this does is is you guys know china has a bit of issues in, with food they have to transition over to farms in the feudal age uh typically if they're playing an extended feudal age and by the time you do this it's just kind of like well why, why where am i putting my where am i putting my granaries down I got 24 farms already. They're happily around mills. And now you're telling me that I need to make some granaries. Like, how do I even put them down? What's the best way to do it? There's no real decent timing for it. Not to mention the fact they were in the Yuan dynasty, which is like, oh, I have to go to age three and then I have to build another landmark, which to be fair, was kind of fucking useless. So this is a really good change. So hopefully we see start seeing some dynasty builds. I know that there's been a lot of chat on uh, the official forums as well as Reddit. I've been keeping up with it. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. I've been looking at it. I've been checking out what all, what all you guys have been saying. Um, I, th I think the... Uh, what, what's the saying? I think the cat's still out. The, the dog's still out. The, the verdict is waiting upon this one. So we'll have to see how it goes. I kind of like it though. I kind of like it, especially um, I've got a new Chinese build order com coming up, uh, which is going to be getting double broad axe as well as an Imperial official on your wood uh, for like all of the early game. And so this is going to like send your wood collection into overdrive, which basically enables you to just power up your food economy because you're going to have so much wood. You, there's no insufficient joke being made here at all. There's going to be too much wood. Uh, but anyway, we continue on. Pagoda requirement reduced from Ming to Yuan Dynasty. Uh, so another great change. So now there's just no building in the Ming Dynasty, I guess. Uh, so the only thing that you get from Minis Ming Dynasty now is Grenadiers, as well as I think it's plus 10% health on your units, which is pretty good. I'll take that. I'll take that. Pagoda Relic resource reduced from 100 gold uh, down to well, 100 of everything down to 50 of everything. I guess you got Tithe Barns as well on top of that. So it's kind of a good change. And they're bringing it down to the Castle Age. Actually, they're bringing it down to the Castle Age. Shit, that could be good. China Fast Castle could be a thing. But then you have to get the Dynasty. And then you have to build the Pagodas. Yeah, that's expensive. That's not going to be a thing. Uh, maybe, like, yeah, it's a late game thing, but that's it. Like, if China can get the Relics, they're going to be happy with it. I think you want three because you can only make three Pagodas. So that's good. Chinese official changes. Supervisor production and research speed reduced from 200 to 150%. We found that China is quite strong with the improvements to their dynasties and the flexibility of 200% production speed, allowing them to an easier counter versus most techs, which is true. Uh, official cost change from 150 to 100 food and 50 gold. China was able to rapidly accelerate their age of time, their age up time, I believe that's meant to be, uh, by skipping a mining camp and using tax gold to age up with their faster building production time. Uh, yes, that is true. We were able to do that. Um, so there's going to have to be new build orders that actually make a mining camp. I don't like it, but it is it is the way. Overall, Chinese changes, very happy with these. Uh, I think this is definitely the right direction for China. They're going to be a lot more aggressive in this new... Uh, m m honestly, my prediction is that China becomes a boar sieve because the Barbican, uh, together, uh, just with the... Of all things, the survival techniques actually might make them a very strong uh, strong H2 sieve. Uh, just because the, Barbican, the, the Barbican on the boar allows them to take control of the map uncontested. They're, they're, I don't think there's any real counter. I think like the only real counter to it would be the English if they pulled villagers. That would be it. But even then, like worst case scenario, you lose a villager, you lose two. Um, you still get the boar. I mean, it, it, you don't want to be losing that many villas. But anyway, um, yeah. So uh, the Abbasid changes. Um, de definitely the the wing. So just just to sort of go over these. So the Abbasid changes. Just to, the the wing changes definitely support a hundred and hundred percent. They are just perfect. Um, the only thing that I would say is like, I'm a bit worried about this camel archer dealigo that you got going on down here. Uh, orchid bonus, orchard bonus, uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, camel archer is the only questionable thing here. I'm, I'm very concerned about that, but, uh, 
I'm not, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, Delhi Sultanate, Delhi Sanctity bonus reduced, bonus reduced from 100% to 50%. Wait, was this not already in the game? I thought this was already in the game. Providing so much gold early allows Delhi to snowball an early lead into unstoppable victory. I thought this was already in the game. Do you, or am, I, am I wild? Okay, uh, I must be wild. I, was, I must have been confusing myself. I thought this was already in the game. Uh, Delhi starting wood reduced from 250 to 200. Good change. Herbal medicine moved to the castle age. Good change. Orchid bonus reduced from 250 to 100. Good change. No, for real this time, guys. Tower War Elephant has been renamed to Tower Elephant, so the name is more distinct from their cousin's War Elephant. <laughs> Delhi fixed a bug. Delhi fixed a bug. Delhi fixed a bug where the Armored Beast's tooltip incorrectly stated it applies to Tower War Elephants and now correctly states it only applies to War Elephants. Slope warning defenses are now correctly positioned. I love how, like, all of this is just bug fixes for Delhi. It's so typical. Like... I'm still thinking about the this Fitzbro bug tier list. Tower of Victory attack speed increased 15 to 20%. The buff is now applied in a larger radius. Effect now properly applies to it, its full bonus to all melee and ranged infantry. I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you, man at arms. Tower of Defeat is no longer going to be the man, the myth, the legend. It is going to be the Tower of Victory back in style. So will we see some Tower of... Could you see like a Tower of Victory into Mass Archers strategy? Is attack speed that important? Actually, attack speed's really important when it comes to archer fights. When you think about it, if you're firing faster, you're trading off more efficiently, right? Because if you've got if, if you've got 30 archers, you're not microing like 10, 10, 10, right? You, you're pretty much just like A moving or, or just single target focus fire. If you've got an extra 20% attack speed on your archers, that could be big. And then combine that with the fact that they get the free upgrades as well. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Fixed a bug that was sometimes reset the food income provided by the Sala Academy. Uh, the comment of the Defender effects are no longer is no longer active while the landmark is destroyed. Delhi Sultanate Tech Tree now lists own blades under the Castle Age. I swear this was in the, the changed log last time. Sultanate, Delhi Sultanate Tree uh, Tech Tree now lists slow burning defenses under Imperial Age instead of Castle Age. English. Okay, so overall Delhi changes. Big nerfs coming into Delhi. Uh, so we see Sanctity getting nerfed. Definitely the right direction. Slows down the start of Delhi as well. They're going to have to chop an extra 50 wood. Uh, Herbal Medicine getting out to the Castle Age. I mean, this is obviously in, in competitive play. I say in competitive play. In tournaments, this wasn't even in the game uh, at this point. But at least now it can come back into the game. Herbal Medicine, we will permit you to return to the game. Uh, but yeah, you, you're probably still going to be a bit of a meme. Uh, Orc Orchard bonus, just spot on. And then a whole bunch of fixes i think this is good this is a really good direction i think delhi is still going to be very viable uh obviously they're slowed down a bit here at the beginning of the game they, they still get access to sacred sites in h2 they are still going to be very strong if they take three sacred sites if they take two sacred sites they're still going to be getting up to castle for free i say for free but you know they're, they're not going to have to mine any gold it's going to be all from the sacred sites it's still massive like you're, you're talking 450 gold a minute versus 600 gold a minute it, it's not that big of a of a debuff especially considering that you're going to have all of your you know your economy i, I still think delhi probably going to be an st sieve after these nerfs uh, but we'll, we'll continue on because the other sieves have been buffed up we we have seen you know the abbasid dynasty has been buffed up especially uh the, the camel archer so who knows how that goes uh china as well being buffed up maybe the borbican becomes st maybe it doesn't i kind of i'm kind of kind of hoping it will We'll see, though. We'll see. I, th I, th I definitely think it's got some outplay potential. Uh, men at Arms. So, English. Men at Arms. Train time reduced from 22 to 15 seconds. Uh, so, uh, Vanguard Men at Arms. Armor increases from 2 to 3. So, this is the age 1 Men at Arms. Uh, Abbey of Kings healing rate increased from 4 to one po by 1 1.5 to 6 every 1 second. Uh, I'm just going to mute my mic for a second. Hopefully, this works. Sorry, guys. I had to clear my throat. Uh, okay. So, and starting wood increased from 150 to 200. White Tower and Barkshire Palace now have visual weapon emplacements for boiling oil. Setup camp no longer can be tri triggered while in combat. Corrected requirement text on English setup camp ability. Okay, so four big buffs coming in here. So mana arm training time being reduced by seven seconds. So it means that you can get a mana arm in your enemy's base seven seconds faster. Uh, the armor is also increased, meaning that your age one mana arm is going to take less damage from the tower or an outpost or English villagers. If you've ever rushed another English player as the English with men at arms, you will know the pain that I have known. Uh, villagers are very strong against men at arms, it seems, when they are ranged. Uh, and then Abbey of Kings, 
so you guys you know like I, I can see the meme right now like stop trying to make abbey of kings a thing uh well they're trying to make abbey of kings a thing and then starting would increase from 150 to 200 so as we talked about before that you can see what their very clear plan is here so I, i'm kind of still in up in arms about exactly what the best way to go about this is um 150 wood is a big investment in the early game. I've come up with a couple of different build orders that I'm currently going through. Uh, you know, men at arms in the enemy base at a minute 30, denying gold. Um, you know, five farms behind it, wheelbarrow behind it, age up at six minutes 30. It's not terrible. Oh my God, that was my Discord. I apologize, guys. I'm not on D&D. &D. Let me turn that off. I actually specifically turned off my D&D &D so that when the patch notes got dropped, I would get a ping for it because I'm like, I'm chilling out here. I'm waiting for the patch notes to drop and they're just not dropping. I'm like, summon the patch notes. And I summoned them. They literally came. I, as soon as I said summon patch notes, uh, they actually came within like five minutes. So it kind of it kind of worked. You can thank me later. Um, but yeah, you can, you can see where they're going for this or what they're going for with this argument. It, it's this whole, uh, you know, they want this uh, Dark Age English rush to be a thing. And when I think about it, I'm like, okay, what, what is to stop someone, hypothetically, just massing men at arms in the Dark Age? Like, if, if you were going to say, like, realistic, what, what is it? Men at arms are pretty effective in, in low number. Are they? I don't know. Watch this space. Watch this space. We'll see. I'm, just, I'm just trying to imagine a world where there's like 15 men at arms in the Dark Age and someone is just sitting on like 26 farms, Dark Age, like, I don't need no feudal! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, overall, good English changes though. I mean, English are going to need more than this to lift them out of the graveyard that they currently sit in. I mean, 50 wood is nice, but to bring English up from like 40%, 42% win rate to 50%, you're going to have to add in like at least another 50 wood. And that's that's not like we're not even getting started yet. Um, let's talk about the French. French Red Palace now has visual weapon emplacements for boiling oil. Arbola Tria Pavis ability now increases armor by five instead of setting armor to five. Fixed a bug with the French tech tree. Military siege engineer. Royal Knight. Okay, great changes for the French. Holy Roman Empire. Regnant's cathedral capacity reduced from three to two. Burgrave Ca Palace now produces infantry 400% faster instead of training units in batches of five. Big oof. Minework Palace research discount increased from 25% to 30%. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, Mindwork Palace research speed increased by 30%. Palace of Swabia villager production speed and re uh, discount reduced from 75% to 66%. Inspired warrior effect duration time increased. Marching drill cost reduced. Marching drill research time reduced. Uh, marching drills now affects prelates because prelates needed more speed, apparently. Fuck, can you imagine prelates, dude? Oh, dude, they got, they're already like 1.15. You could actually chase an enemy army down with prelates and then nah that wouldn't work because i have to stand still don't worry Jungo. you're a dickhead added a prelate ui indicator for holy roman empire players okay cool uh l's back palace now is a visual so these are just a whole bunch of um bug fixes here uh which i, I appreciate but i want to focus on these balance changes because these are big uh so this is good obviously you guys know that the regnant's cathedral is too strong it is way too strong in, to the point where I don't think, like, there, there was a point where I couldn't even remember the name of this landmark, the Burgrave Palace. Um, but now it seems that the Burgrave Palace is going to be a thing. So the way I'm thinking about it is, and I, I've talked to Kenoki a little bit about testing for this and, you know, what could potentially happen. You could take a prelate, hypothetically, out into the middle of the map with eight villages and take the boar and try and make that work somehow and then put the outposts down to protect the villagers and the prelate. Hear me out, hear me out. I know you guys are going like, you, you guys are sitting there, okay? And then somehow you're going up, you, you do the mine work palace, do the Ark and Chapel, I don't care whatever you're doing. Uh, but then you're going, you're making the Burgrave Palace in the middle of the map with those eight villagers, whether you leave them on the boar, whether you move them out to a deer hunt, you're just putting it out in the middle of the map closer to the enemy's base. And then with your prelates that are out on the map already because they were, you know, doing their thing, uh, you're then going to take the relics and then instead of putting them in the Regnitz Cathedral, you're going to put them in the outposts because the Holy Roman Empire can put them in the outposts. Hey, hey, could work. It could work. A lot, a lot of synergy in there, right? Like, I feel like this is a team meeting for like a tech company. Synergy. Synergy. Am I getting that? Synergy. 
it's it's got to be in the it's got to be in the shot uh overall good changes though i mean you're taking away the, the the strongest part of the holy roman empire and you're buffing up the weakest part uh you're you're taking a a less used landmark and giving it some usefulness um and at the same time you're taking away the strength in the late game from four town centers down to three good changes uh really really good changes love to see it mongols all right here's the good stuff Textiles improved has been added to the town center available in the castle age. This is intended to help Mongols defend against raids later in the game as they have no walls or keeps. I know you guys are all Mongol mains. I, I know it. I know every single developer just plays the Mongols. They don't play any other civs. Every single one of them. Why is it in the castle age? Why Just put it in the dark age, bro. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. That's no, fine. Don't worry about it. Textiles improve increases the health of village by <laughs> fifty. It's fine. No, it's fine. No, no honestly, this <laughs> honestly, this is absolutely okay. I'm just being a dickhead. Uh, Mongol landmark town center can now be packed while at maximum population, so you can finally hit that two hundred one out of two hundred. You will see that come up in uh, in replays. Uh, people will unpack their Mongol town center, and it will go up to two hundred one. Uh, improved biology now only provides ten percent health instead of fifteen. Wonderful. Reducing late game strength for the Mongols. That's good. Fix the bug where Mongol improved the tithe barns. Improved tithe barns did not list the correct resource income. Fix the bug where Mongol tithe barns was 80. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Oh, this was this is a good one actually. Uh, upgraded yam or movement speed bonus no longer applies to siege units. This is really big. Uh, if you've ever played against a Mongol player that do what I like to call trench warfare you will know the pain of this. So essentially picture it this, picture it like this. Outposts, sprinkled emplacements in them, trebuchets firing off, sprinkled on the front line, protecting the trebuchets, spearmen, men at arms, crossbows and archers, protecting the sprinkled, and slowly they're sieging down your base. And you try and kill their trebuchets, but you can't because their sprinkled move up with the yam network faster than you, and they get into better positions than you and then if they get caught in a bad spot they've got a little bit faster speed and then they pop off the car arrow and then they're just like running faster than a knight yep that that's the nerf that, that's that's the nerfed one as well uh <laughs> overall good changes but obviously mongols still gonna be way too strong still gonna be s tier uh after the patch i mean it's interesting kind of like all of the sieves i'm, I'm looking at to be honest I, I think maybe mongols might even be stronger than the Delhi after this because nothing is nerfed about the Mongol at the Mongols at all other than this and this is a small issue but it's not it's not going to stop you know if, if you if you've watched any of the the caster games where you see Mongols where they go for early uh, pastures just try and play a little bit in feudal where possible just enough to get up to the next stage play into castle and then just go absolutely ham not much you can do to stop it so yeah, I mean, we'll see how it plays out, but I suspect this is still going to be a very strong civilization. So, Mongol mains. Sorry, I mean, devs. Uh, I'm looking at you guys. Looking at you guys. Rus, here we go. The big the big Rus boys. Warrior Monk weapon range increased from 1.15 to, to 3. Uh, the charge is also increased, so now they're going to be stabbing you from a little bit further away. Uh, horse archer precision technology weapon range reduced from two to one, so they're not going to be they're not going to be longbows on horses anymore. They're just going to be kind of pseudo longbows on horses because they used to have they've got I think four point five range. No, they've got five range, uh, and that took them to seven. Now it only takes them to six, so that's good. Um, horse archer precision technology research time uh, reduced from ninety to sixty. Strelzi double time ability no longer quickens their static deployment ability. I'll be honest, I don't actually really know how that works. I just know that like. One of them, I, I know there's going to be like a thousand YouTube comments saying this is how it works. Don't worry, guys. That's okay. I'll read it. I'll read it. I promise. Banded arm bonus bonus range. Uh, we wanted to focus on this tech to of this technology to be about the movement ability instead of adding extra functionality to an already powerful unit. It's a Streltsy nerf, and it's a late game nerf as well for the Rus. Okay. Banded arms bonus range decrease from 1.5 to 0.5. Cool. This is good. Uh, Golden Gate trade buttons have been relocated. Golden Gate no longer shares click selection with markets. Lodger, uh, t Lodger ships have the correct... Actually, we, we need to talk about uh, the fishing ship change as well. Um, but let's just talk about this first. So I do find it very interesting that Banded Arms gets its range reduced 
from 1.5 to 0 0.5 eff effectively making the springholds a maximum of 12.5 range and yet get guess who still guess who still has 13 range untouched springholds this guy this guy this guy right here don't worry don't worry next patch that won't get changed either i guarantee you. I guarantee you that will not get changed in the next patch i'm calling it out right now guarantee you i i i bet i don't even know what what can i bet you guys i bet you i bet you 100 youtube videos that i will post that it doesn't get changed in the next patch like the next big balance patch it is still unchanged i guarantee you improved uh improved roller shutter triggers for mongols still gives them the the full plus one range oh they're, they're, they're the mongols we should have the extra range <laughs> <laughs> that was me impersonating the devs. I'm sorry, devs. You, you guys know I love you. It's a love-hate relationship. Uh, Lodge out fishing ship. Uh, so so far, I mean, let's talk about these changes. These are good changes. They, they take away uh, from the Rus late game. And in, in my opinion, I know I know that not everybody agreed with me, but in my opinion, the Rus late game was the strongest. Uh, this definitely takes them down from being number one to probably being number two. Uh, China being number one now, most likely. Uh, so China is back on top, baby. We're back on top. Um, for the late game situation, that is. Uh, and also, Stroltzy nerf is kind of good as well. Uh, now, this is the big one. This is a big change to Rus. This is going to dynamically change or change dramatically uh, the way that the Rus play on water. So, they're essentially going to have super fishing ships. So, they it says these changes are aimed at slowing down the Lodger fishing ship rush. Players will now have less fishing ships to convert into attack ships immediately upon aging up to feudal. Okay, population cost is increased from 1 to 2. Cost is increased from 75 to 150. So double population, double cost. Uh, health is doubled. Deep water fish gather rate is basically doubled, but slightly not. Uh, shoreline gather fish is almost doubled. Uh, double of this would be 1.32, if my math serves me correctly. Uh, double of this would be 2.0, if my math serves me correctly. So the gather rate is slightly slower. Uh, fixed an effects marker attachment issue that was causing the fires to not be correct locations okay um so very very close so you you pay double and you get you know 90 percent that sort of thing but where the big issue comes in is train time 25 to 38 seconds so you will note that it is not a 50 second train time now i'm sure that, that you know our smarter people would be like well hold on drongo just a second there uh you know normal people or n normal uh normal fishing boats you know they, they might try might train in uh, in 25 seconds they're gonna be gathering resources in that time and so if you put this up at 50 seconds then that's gonna be a full 25 seconds that the rus is not gathering their resources so we got to bring that down yeah that's true now let's extrapolate this over 10 fishing boats and see what happens because i guarantee you this is going to be looking very pretty uh when you're talking about that many fishing boats and Th that will happen. There will be times where the Rus player is making five fishing boats and the enemy is making seven. And now the Rus player's got, you know, a, a, an effectively much larger economy. But, I mean, we'll, we'll wait. We'll see how it plays out. I think overall, these are good changes. They, 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 if, even if we were just to, like, look outside of that train time thing, let's, let's just wipe that off the board. Let's, you know what? Let's even say, let's double it. Okay. Does that change the situation? Yeah, that changes the situation massively. Because as, as they said, you know, now it's, it's going to mean that when you age up as at, as the Rus on water at 3 minutes 50, because yes, that's actually possible. Uh, we, we've seen some crazy strategies coming out from people that not only is your feudal now going to be delayed because your training time is a little bit longer here. So the time before you actually get that second boat. By the way, to that guy who was going to say that oh, there's, there's 13 seconds here that the first fishing boat is gathering that the second one's not... Yeah, well, what about the 12 seconds that the second boat is gathering that my second one's not? Yeah, take that, mate. Take that. Um, yeah, so I think over, overall, the, these rules changes are very good. Uh, I, I, I am... Yeah, I, I think this definitely hits where the rules issue is. My fear is that rules late game, I, I just don't know how it's going to work. At least on water. I guess they... they you you got to use a combo of... Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, let's let's say a Chinese player reaches castle and they're getting out war junks. And they're also supporting it with a little bit of junk. As a, as a Rus player, how do you beat that? I got no idea. I got no idea. All right, let's continue moving on because we got... We are 48 minutes through this and we've still got maps, campaign, general fixes, and what's next. Uh, so I'm going to jump down to maps. 
resource spawn tuning. <laughs> I was going to go down to general fixes, and I'm like, you know, you know what? We'll, we'll go here. Uh, map size resource balancing has received a pass with the goal of improving the distribution of resources between players. So this means that they have looked at every single map, and they have said, okay, where is the boar spawning? Ah, let's tighten that up a bit. Where is the second forest spawning? Let's tighten that up a bit. Where is the relic spawning? Let's tighten that up a bit. So you can see here, you know, on open maps like Lipany and Dry Arabia, this has meant objects like relics, gold deposits, stone deposits are now spawning in a tighter band for each player to cut down on cases where one resource node would spawn considerably further away from one player than the other. We're also, we're always tweaking and looking to improve this. So keep sending us screenshots and map seeds when you feel things are generated unfairly. Uh, and then uh, they talk uh, further a little bit about that relic. So now you're going to have one accessible relic and three centrally contested relics. So really good change. They've also made it so that divided maps. So think think of like Mongolian Heights where you can't really balance it so that both players get, you know, because someone's always going to get three relics and someone's always going to get two and you're typically going to be walling the crossings. They're just going to give each side three relics. So kind of a buff here to those civilizations that uh, rely on relics so you could say this is a china buff because if china can secure three relics then it's going to have its pagodas in the yuan dynasty that are going to help it out uh it's going to be a holy roman empire buff because even though they, their regnitz cathedral got nerfed they typically want to get um they, they want to get their two relics right and if they're having trouble to get those um then it's going to be an issue for them but obviously with more relics on on the maps it's going to be better for them so it, it's stuff like that. And then by the same token, uh, the rules, it's a buff for them because they naturally are going to be having uh, more control over relics uh, because of their warrior monk. So there you go. There you go. There's a whole bunch of specific map changes as well. Now, I'm not going to be going through all of these. I will leave a link in the description to where you can go through them if you would like to. Uh, but we're heading back down. Oh, Confluence uh, adjusted the crossings on this map. Now a fjord. A fjord, a ford, will spawn on each arm of the river near the edge of the map. And near the center confluence point, a stone bridge will... Huh? Oh. Oh, this is better. Oh, this is much better. Okay, okay. This is much better. Oh, okay. Maybe I will actually play confluence now. So... This changes confluence. Why does this change confluence? Number one, uh, you can't move boats either side of this. That's fishing boats. That's any boats. You cannot go on other sides of a bridge. Just not possible. Uh, so it basically means that this central location here is like the battle zone. You, you can take control. Like if you take control of this sing, this location in the middle, you can set like uh, you can drop units off on any corner. But the problem is you're not even going to need to do that because as you can see now down in this, this corner here, You've actually got passes so you have a pass on every single corner and then you have a pass here so let's say you wanted to wall in you would need to wall in this spot you would need to wall in that spot you would need to wall in that spot and you need to wall in that you know people are still going to do it but at least it makes it a little bit more like resource intensive um so yeah that's that's a good change uh changes to a whole bunch of other maps as well what do we got here uh king of the hill oh my god please tell me they're doing what i think they're doing a dense perimeter forest was added that rings the entire map. Good on you. Good on you. Removed all random forests on the map. Oh, good on you. Oh, my lord. And all of a sudden, people fell in love with King of the Hill. Now, already, uh, there were people that had gone in and modded a new King of the Hill the way it should be. Uh, but hopefully, this one is much better as well. Um... Wait. Maybe that map was the map that they had. Because it had the perimeter fence as well, or the perimeter forest as well. And it also had the, the sacred site right in the middle, and the resource balance was even like this. Maybe that devs, good shit, brother. Added maps. So they added a whole bunch of maps. Me Mega random is coming in hot. Uh, it is a random map. Crafted maps. This is what I love. This is what I freaking love. Have you ever played StarCraft 2? You know how every single time you spawn in on the same map, it's always the exact same? Well, now you can have it in Age of Empires as well. Valley Battle is the first one, the first crafted map, which will always spawn the exact same way, no matter how many, no matter, no matter how you play it. Uh, so this is this is something that's really good for competitive to an extent. Uh, but it is it's one of those things. You know what? I'm just gonna say it. I think it's good for competitive. Um, I'm I'm pretty confident that with crafted maps, so it randomizes your starting. Uh, resource location. So as an example, you might have a front berries. Next game, you might have a back berries. But that's it. And because that's obviously important. Um, 
but other than that everything else is the same your relic spawns are always going to be in the exact same spot your sacred sites are always going to be in the exact same spot you're never going to get those double sacred sites that spawn you know down the bottom on hill and dale where they're right next to each other outside the choke point of someone else's freaking base you're never going to get the altai spawn where there's no uh third sacred site and interestingly when you've got no third sacred site you can't actually get the sacred site victory even if you control both of the other two sacred sites there you go found that out the hard way didn't i uh, <laughs> uh, a whole bunch of changes to the campaign i'm not going to go through these ones because as you guys know i haven't really played much of the campaign so it's not going to mean too much for me but if it means something to you make sure you check it out uh, and then general fixes controls ui and quality of life this is kind of a big one uh i kind of would have liked this to be at the top maybe even before balance uh, so there's a new toggle in the settings to activate control group exclusivity. When enabled, units being bound to a control group will be unbound from all other control groups. So as I said before, let's say you have got like a whole bunch of units on control one. And then you grab your scouts and you're like, hey, I'm going to put you in control two. It's going to take them out of control one and just put them into control two with that. So really good change there. A lot of people will be used to this functionality from other age games. Uh, I was as used to it as well. But now I've kind of grown used to the other one. So I don't know if I'll use it. We'll see. Added new... Oh, excuse me. I'm trying to, like, burp there. Added new drag camera hotkey in the settings. I'll have to check that one out. Added new hotkey to clear all control groups from selected units. Added new hotkeys to select all buildings by type. Added new hotkeys to cycle through and select all building, all different buildings. So does this mean I can actually go... Um, control A is my barracks. Control S is my stable. Because if that's, like, all of them... Because if that's the case, it's going to be so easy for me. Control A, Control B, Control C, Control V... Oh my god, that's going to be so good, dude. Added hotkeys to cancel the last item or all items of the selected production queue. New hotkeys to remove selected units from a select a specific... We talked about that one. Shift and alt keys have been unlocked and can now be used for all key combos. The rotate camera control has been unlocked and can be rebound to any key combo. Thank, thank the lord. Uh, control group commands. Yo, did this soundtrack actually run out? I'm not even kidding you. I So I've got like... Wow, Viper. You, I can't believe you. You gotta like, you you gotta make a longer soundtrack, brother. What you doing down there? All right, we fix that up. Mouse three middle button and mouse four and five side buttons can be used when rebiting hotkeys. Bug fixes, a uh, whole bunch of bug fixes here. I'm not gonna go through them. All other improvements improve the message m notification for remapping conflicts in the control remap. Updated the remap control settings screen. Uh, selected unit building stat card now shows the cumulative the accumulated amount of buffs and debuffs for attack, health, and armor. Improved presentation of observer delay pop-up. Uh, improved contrast ratio in the quick match, match section when viewing in strong contrast mode. Improved the message notification for remapping conflicts. Again, again remapping. Didn't we talk about that? Isn't that up here? It's literally the same thing. Improved UI narration when selecting between verse modes in the quick player. Uh, improve the UI narration on the navigation tabs. UI narration does not say back button when clicking or using keyboard nav. The Ark and Chapel blueprint area range indicator has been updated to use the correct gold color. Removed keyboard navigation of non-interactive player portraits. New toggle in the online settings to be enabled disabled ping chat messages. Keyboard layouts should no longer be removed from the OS by the game. What's next? We've made it to the end, boys. And girls. And enemies. So, what's next following the Season 1 update? Well, for starters, we'll be paying attention to what you say about the changes in the forums and across various social channels. We also plan to send out a survey very soon, asking some in-depth questions as we continue to refine and improve. On a scale of 1 to 5, how much are the devs Mongol mains? 1 being 100% and 5 being 110%. I'll go with like a three. Keep an eye. <laughs> I love you guys. Keep an eye out for that in the next few weeks. We'll plan to respond to any immediate call outs via a monthly patch if needed. And in the midterm are turning our attention to some of the features we discussed for season two, including a map vote system, player color picker and additional hotkey work. The team has also heard your feedback about team game map sizes, and we're looking into making some adjustments in this area. This is an area we'll want to adjust and test over time internally, so it may not land in the next patch, but we're actively working on it. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We've finally reached the end of the patch. This is the end of the Season 1 update patch, and by golly gosh, 
Isn't she a beauty? Isn't she an absolute beauty? There is so much in here that I absolutely love. Obviously, Age of Empires 4 started off, off on a rocky road, but we've made some... We've made some steps, haven't we, boys? We have made some steps. Uh, there's still a long way to go. Don't get me wrong. There's still a lot of things that we need. Player colors in particular. Taunts, cheats, uh, a spectator UI that actually is fit for purpose. And a whole lot more, but I'm sure it's coming. With some DLC, I suspect. I'll catch you guys in the next one on a very fitting note to end this, uh, this beautiful video. We're 59 minutes in. Goodbye. Custard.